we incorporate all of the features of the previous section into a single intractable model. Each joint is propagated throughout time with tracking features, and the color correspondence and geometry of each left-right pair is modeled as well. Because this model is intractable, we use an ensemble of six sub-models that collectively cover each edge in the original model. For each joint, we have a single model with time persistence for that joint and one of the symmetric cross edges. Here we see the left-hand time persistence model. In addition to the left-hand model, we have a right-hand model, left elbow model, right elbow model, left shoulder model, and right shoulder model. We learn parameters for each model separately, using a subgrading descent on a max margin structured prediction loss. At inference time, each model can give very different predictions for each joint, and typically only the joint with time persistence has a temporally smooth trajectory. Here we see the predictions of each of the six models. Here we see all predictions overlaid on top of each other. We compared three different methods of combining the predictions from the ensemble, all of which had roughly comparable accuracy on the test set. The simplest method is to take the prediction for each joint of the model that includes temporal persistence for that joint. We call this the independent prediction model. Another approximate method is to do maximum a posteriori decoding by summing the max marginals of each model for each joint. This gives a fast and crude best guess for each frame independently, which is slightly more accurate but less smooth than independent predictions. The final approach we tried was dual decomposition, an iterative process that may potentially converge to the true argmax solution of the intractable model. In practice, we found that dual decomposition rarely converged, and therefore yielded outputs that were similar to those of the approximate maximum a posteriori approach. Here we compare our three methods of combining the ensemble against two state-of-the-art single-frame methods. As can be seen, the single-frame methods are both qualitatively worse at capturing the movement, and also significantly less accurate at predicting the locations of elbows and wrists.